Ambassador Zhang Zi Wu. For a spy who's been betrayed, there are lines to be crossed. I've been set up. Rules to break. Who is this man? And a reason to fight back. Wesley Snipes. What goes around, comes around. The Art of War. Look for it on video cassette and DVD. back in the house and long time no see mark movie geek rap fan shaver back with a vengeance <laughs> how's it going i i'm groovy baby uh glad to have you back and yeah glad to be back it's been the, it's been a while the second wesley snipes franchise we're taking on <laughs> all right well third i guess if we count because yeah, we did do an undisputed special, didn't we? <laughs> I'm assuming the the first one was Blade, right? Yes. <laughs> and we we did talk Demolition Man in the comic book. That believe it or not was actually pretty cool. But yeah, this is probably the, technically the third that you could say is a, a franchise. Well, we'll do Expendables soon. Don't get me wrong, but like, uh, but for like oh, yeah. the second franchise, he has headed up that. Could have been force something. coming out next month already. Yeah, I can't believe it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, expendables. Um, so, um, Wesley was always kind of one of my many just action stars, like the everyday men I watched with all the Harrison Fords, Antonio Banderas's, and uh, just uh other just '90s and 2000s stars on the big and small screens. You know, I would watch anybody, whether it was. Don Johnson, Kiefer Sutherland, to Richard Dean Anderson, to, you know, just all the other guys who were, you know, big shots like Bruce Willis. And uh, it seemed to let and Pierce Brosnan and it just seemed like he was just one of those other guys you got. If you didn't want to deal with Seagal behind the scenes and Bruce Willis and Stallone were unavailable, he seemed to just always come up in the hat. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he's definitely to me. I mean, he's. He's just one. Of, he's one of those action stars i mean i would consider him an a-list action star but yeah i would say he's great you know, with comedy and drama <laughs> i would say like he doesn't have quite as many uh, he he could have had more i think action kind of action hits under his belt yeah i mean and, like and, more films like passenger 57 or you know stuff like that but the art of war was a good one i mean that's yeah. one i I saw it in the theater and uh, lucky you, <laughs> you know, I, um, I bought it when it came out on VHS. Sweet. It was produced I by it again. I, franchise I, I, pictures. <laughs> finally, you know, Oh gosh, it was probably five years ago. Now I probably finally, I upgraded to DVD eh. and I've, you know, I, I, I considered buying it on Blu-ray, but finally it was just like, I, I've replaced so many movies <laughs> you can only I got so to the point where I'm like, you know, let's just <laughs> stick with the DVD for now. <laughs> but I've been meaning to watch it again. I mean, um, I I, I, I try to stick a, throw a throw an action film on, like Fourth of July. Like if I come home after, hopefully seeing fireworks somewhere or, or whatever you. I like to usually end the night by throwing on a good action film. Just a fun, just over the top movie. <laughs> yeah, but uh, this year, I mean, I had to work really early the next morning. Still kind of getting used to working like earlier in the day. So, you know, I even then I thought if there's time, I'm, I'm going to throw that one on. But, you know, it's just especially with having kids and stuff, it's like it's already midnight. Like I got to get to bed. <laughs> yeah. But, 
But sooner or later, I don't think my wife's ever seen that one. So sooner or later, I got to say, hey, let's watch it again. Yeah, I, I, I'd i say so. Uh, so are you familiar with franchise pictures? Well, I've heard of franchise pictures. I'm not super familiar with them. Is so that were... the one? It has like a, <laughs> I could well be wrong. It's, it's like a white logo with like buildings on it. Yeah, a giant white building. So it, long story short, they were kind of the Canon Films of Warner Brothers. Like they would just produce stuff direct to HBO and under the Warner Brothers and they had some good ones like Spartan, and then they had some infamous ones like Ballistic X versus Sever. And oh, yeah, I, <laughs> I remember that. Fear.com and uh, Boondock Saints was a cult hit by them. So they did a few other ones by Fox and company, but then they just kind of faded out. And Andrew Stevens was kind of the egomaniac producer. He had already been an actor starring in sleazy and cheesy movies. and uh basically no one could tell them no and they cranked this one out and you know just from like all the electronic music and stylized fight scenes you're gonna get another matrix type you know movie yeah it had i mean i remember it definitely had some flavor of the matrix thrown in there even though it was you know contemporary set film but like right <laughs> the whole scene at the end and like the uh well i think they were at the uh un building right yeah and and uh, like the the gunplay and stuff, I mean, it had like you could tell they were going for like kind of uh, somewhat similar to the Matrix, which in turn, you know, obviously owes a lot of debt again to John Woo. So I mean, yeah, it's, uh, you know, anything any early eight nineties cinema is pretty much firing on all fours and B movie director Christian Dubois, who had done stuff like The Assignment, Screamers. Uh, and scanner films uh, was helming this you know because it was a canadian production uh the cinematographer has pure jill has done a bunch of stuff uh especially tv uh simon barry uh one of the co-writers has gone on to do other sorts of just giant canadian tv shows including bad blood and warrior nun and the van helsing show and continuum but uh, the biggest connection to Wesley Snipes here might be uh, Wayne Beach, who uh, previously wrote uh, S- uh, Snipes' movie uh, Murder at 1600, the one okay. where he's a Secret Service agent. And then he did I another saw that one a long time ago. Yeah. And this I is pretty it much. recently, though. That's another one. It's like. It's another one that divides Snipes fans. I, I don't know why. I wish I had more time to, to, to watch movies. I mean. <laughs> yeah, I do. I did too, man. Uh, I, I could usually sneak in like six a day and it was fun, but. <laughs> well, back in the day, yeah, when I was like a kid in the summer vacation, yes, sometimes I would watch like five in a day, but. <laughs> <laughs> why not, man? Why not? You only get one life. Um, So um, kind of like later sports nigger where. You know, he would do other movies that people would just compare or even lampoon as being derivative of his of his earlier, like, True Lies and Commando persona. This was kind of another one where they're like, oh, he's in Rising Sun, U.S. Marshals territory again. He's he's both, you know, it's another East meets West scenario where he's dealing with some uh, Chinese triads. Yeah. Oh, you know, not Japan, but. Uh, there's still a lot of other stuff like there's a big north korean a, well sorry i was gonna say it, go ahead there was almost like a james bond angle at times or even yeah. like the opening scene reminded me of like a mission impossible type scenario mm-hmm. like the team was in like that van something like that so yeah yeah on the tuxedo and all that mm-hmm. and, and he's whispering in and he's got kind of a cue kind of gadget man and and of course uh well, we will pretty much just spoil the movie because it's really not, not because we want to, but like it's pretty easy to connect the dots. But um, uh, there's a bunch of other like Chinese American actors who you've seen in every other kind of movie from Wind Talkers to Olympus Has Fallen, and they do their job. James. Yeah, James Hong from James Big Hong Trouble in China is the assassinated ambassador. Kerry Tagawa. So th- there again, there's another Rising Sun connection. Donald Sutherland is another uh, military sneak. This is pretty much when he's just getting typecast in that galore. He's like, got to play a shady government guy. <laughs> and 
and Archer from Jack Ryan movies and uh, uh, just, you know, various other just dramas uh, is pretty much... Who was the woman who played the the female team member of of, of Wesley Snipes' character? Uh, I, 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 I think, think that's her. Yeah, Elner. Yeah. Okay. Or oh, no, she oh. was like younger. Are you talking about the Polish gal? Let me oh, yeah. see here real quick. Uh, was, was she the white gal who was with her, or are you talking about the? She ended up like getting killed, like you know, spoiler alert. But again, we're we're, we're kind of uh, okay. Yeah, so I have her here as Liliana Korovarovsky as Agent Jenna Novak. So I think that's who that was. But she's another gal who's done a lot of Canadian productions, mostly with the same filmmakers. But uh, Fernando Ching was one of the other henchmen. You've seen him in stuff like Fast Five and Warrior and the accountant but uh uh maury chalkin there's another comedic face he's doing serious stuff again but pretty much oh, yeah. marie matico i forgot she was in she was in the corrupt yeah. i remember yes yeah yeah you are that is the woman that, that i was thinking of no it's, all good. it's a good movie, yeah. movie it's all good uh so but yeah mary apparently won a AX award and for those who wonder what the hell that means uh, it's a uh an airport experience award so they were like hey she's best actress in a feature film at this particular festival so someone won an award for this B action film uh but yeah she's done little minor stuff she's done a lot of spoof movies tv guest spots and was kind of one of the disco gals and mystery men and uh, she pretty much was another one who kind of just did a lot of obscure stuff once the 2010s began. But uh, she's kind of she's not really uh, typecast as a dragon lady, but she's just kind of one of those where she appears in stuff like The Corrupter with Chow Yun Fad and yeah, and, and that just, one they filmed that in Toronto. I remember that. Was oh, like, so there you go. Toronto <laughs> doubled for New York City in that. You know. <laughs> uh, apparently, this was supposed to be a Jet Li movie, and I can't find any info as to why he passed on it. But there no, you go. now that you mention that, I've totally forgot about that. I I think I remember reading that though. So, like yeah, in I'm, Black I'm Belt magazine, or <laughs> I'm interested to learn more about that. Like, there's certain little pieces of info about Jet Li out there, you know that. Like he made that rise to honor video game. I love that game. Yeah. Yeah, me too. And there was like supposed to be a sequel, but it never happened or whatever. But it was like weird because I think it did good business. Like at that point, anyone would buy a video game if it had their favorite kung fu star, uh, you know, rapper or even NBA player in it, you know. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, at the time, I mean, um, I thought at the time, it, it, at least it was probably the best, you know, attempt at recreating like a Hong Kong action film in, in a video game uh, environment, I guess you could say. Totally. I, especially the attention to detail and just even in-game references to other movies like Once Upon a Time in China and Hard Boiled. Hard Boiled. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. It's a giant... Hospital. There's a Chinese cafe shootout. You're like, come on, <laughs> you, you know what you're referencing. Um, yeah, I think you could even unlock. Yeah, you could unlock a Fist of Legend costume and uh, <laughs> Once Upon a Time in China. There you go. Costume. <laughs> <laughs> this one yeah, is no, totally. I mean, I. Was, it's been a well, it hadn't been too long, but it's been a few years. But you know, I I hang on to those games, so I I still throw them on and play them once in a while. <laughs> yeah, Jackie totally. Chan Stunt Master was another one that exactly, dude. Oh my god! I mean, that, that one's just a lot of fun. Like, I think it kind of flew under the radar a little bit, but my uncle was a big fan of it. I, I promise you, we we will totally talk about those Hong Kong inspired video games. But oh yeah, that that would make for a good uh, podcast. Yeah, we we've been overdue. We've been meaning to talk about other awesome comics, uh, comic books, and even just novels themselves that are based on popular. TV shows and movies that continued the beloved character's journey. I mean, 
there's, there's all kinds of stuff out there whether it's robocop oh, yeah. or indiana jones and speaking of hard-boiled i mean there was a inspector tequila video game <laughs> oh yeah stranglehold yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> so this is a wild one kind of like undisputed was kind of owned by millennium films but had different distributors like dimension films uh universal and warner brothers this is another one where despite franchise being the main money man this is a uh, produced by snipes is aim roth films morgan creek productions which had done some of his other kind of earlier blockbusters and then warner brothers distributes as part of their franchise picture deals and then the sequel where snipes returns is a sony joint and then the third one is also a Sony joint, but instead they decide we don't want to bring Snipes back. Let's bring Treach, that's right, from Naughty by Nature back into the title role. <laughs> <laughs> and it's weird too, because he does some other direct video action films that feel very much kind of like this or Mission Impossible to where you're just like, I, I would like to just be in the executive's room and say, how did you make all these bizarre B action movies? <laughs> And what was the what was the game plan? <laughs> yeah, you know, he yeah, Tretch, he made like uh a few kind of, you know, I guess you like you said, direct to video action movies, which <laughs> gosh, I don't even do know it. if I saw any of them. I, yeah. I remember he did one with Steven Seagal. <laughs> I almost bought that one, but I, I never did yet, but one of these days I'll have to check it out. <laughs> and then he did What's that one called? Like a uh, Connor's a War or something? Uh, yeah, Love and a Bullet. And then, but but this other spy one he did was called Connor's War. And I kept seeing that be advertised in all like the pay per view back in the day, back when pretty much anyone would buy anything. They didn't care if it went to a theater or not. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, it's it's insane. But uh, we'll, we'll get to those uh, as this goes down. But as everyone can probably see, this is kind of a decent A-list cast with a B-movie scenario and then followed by kind of lowbrow, you know, not really remarkable sequels, but um, where where would you rank this as a Snipes movie? Is this just kind of fun, like, uh, just more like seconds or thirds versus a no, underrated movie? Well, you know, it's definitely not thirds. Um, okay, <laughs> For me, at least, I mean, everybody's going to kind of have their own experience and stuff. I mean, it was one of only a few of his that I got to see in the theater. I, mean, I saw Blade in the theater, mm -hmm. the first one. Oh, sweet. And then The Art of War. Mm -hmm. And then I don't think it's any more until Expendables 3. So I think only three I got to check out in the theater. Um and then, you know, it's just, it's one of those movies that, you know, it's just kind of, like I said, I bought it when it came out on VHS and kind of, you know, I'd definitely watch it periodically. And mm -hmm. it's, it's, I mean, it's, it's hard to say exactly where I would put it. I mean, it's, it's not really um, like a first wave, so to speak. Yeah. But. Probably but you wouldn't put it as his worst or anything. Uh, and oh, okay. no way. No, no. It's <laughs> like, it's one of, it's one of my, you know, it, it's closer to my favorites than not. So. Yeah. Uh, it's one of those where kind of like, it reminds me of that other Schwarzenegger movie, Eraser, and kind of oh. any other movie that was trying to be like Enemy of the State. It was just kind of in that vein where, people would again always compare your movie to like all the other hong kong stuff and say oh it's not as good as this or that and it's like well it doesn't have to be <laughs> eraser was good i mean that was oh yeah that was good it. arnold i mean the with especially with those uh rail guns and everything I mean, mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> well what else can you ask for but yeah um this is kind of another one where i just kept seeing people say oh it's poor man's james bond i'm like well it's not trying to be like James Bond. It's kind of just tipping its hat. It's, I mean, yeah, you could say the same thing about Vin Diesel when he did Triple X or any yeah. other actor who had their own spy movie franchise. You know, it's it's just trying to be its own thing while acknowledge inevitably that hey, we're pretty inspired by all these other movies and shows. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's impossible not to 
not to be inspired. You're gonna borrow. So, You're gonna. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, no, I I don't have any real complaints other than that. Uh, the traitor, you kind of know just from we've just seen too many movies, so we know instantly Michael Bean's up to no good. Yeah, but I think that was more just he was typecast. So if I had any complaint, don't get me wrong, he's very he's having a lot of fun as the villain. But if I had to change it up, I would have probably just said, hey, maybe they could have just had there be three other people on the spy force so we at least had more to pick from yeah yeah that's a good point kind of like if you're gonna ma- make it a complex chess game like original mission impossible where it was exactly Jim phelps Every- you know <laughs> exactly Fel- it, yeah it, <laughs> that was a twist in and of itself it's like the main mentor is the main villain. <laughs> and- yeah <laughs> and he was like the hero of the TV series, right? So right, and I mean, <laughs> people who were uh, urchins who couldn't put aside their love of the show were like, "Nope, nope, I refuse to acknowledge that." And other people were like, "I don't know, man, that's pretty twisted." <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, so Neil Shaw, uh, uh, he does Snipes does get to do some good fight choreography here and i still can't believe that this was again a few years before born identity because same kind of deal where heavy attention to like how he breathes how he even just crawls up a wall it's a very visual themed movie it's not just focusing on getting into the next fight scene but like there's a bunch of just like stealth and yeah uh it seems like that just wasn't enough for audiences it didn't make enough money back but that's where i'm also like i i don't know what they wanted <laughs> then he had like a parachute or something right at the beginning scene where he like i think he jumped off the building with the parachute right something yeah like that yeah uh he, that's a good call i totally forgot yeah he takes it out of his shoe <laughs> <laughs> speeds away um if anything uh i feel like some of the explosions go on a little too long like everything explodes on impact but let, let's be honest it's just a trope of the times back when they thought you know if you shoot a gun in a plane that the entire side half of it just demolishes you know <laughs> you kind of got to just in action movie terms just go with it oh uh, yeah definitely kind of like part the of the fun <laughs> but that, I, I never understood why people have such an issue with him or liam neeson and yet they're okay with Harrison Ford jumping off a cliff in The Fugitive or, you know, anybody else can do that. I'm like, well, why are they exceptions? Oh, they're getting older. I'm like, well, that's kind of part of the formula. <laughs> <laughs> I don't get it. Uh, How about I, you? I mean, where amongst like his other, you know, at least like starring roles in, in, in action films and stuff. I mean... I, I wouldn't put it as his top 10, but it would probably be in a top 20 list for sure. Like it's going to be up there somewhere just as a fun, just Sunday night movie. I wouldn't put it as a 2 a.m. movie, but definitely just a reasonable, just, it it reminds me a lot of Entrapment. Like that's not going to be number one on my totem pole of Sean Connery or (laughs) Catherine Zeta movies, but it's going to be up there somewhere after I'm done rewatching James Bond and Ocean's Eleven franchise is going to be in there somewhere i finally got around to seeing that one just a couple years back i mean it was it's a twisted it was, movie <laughs> it was okay i mean it wasn't yeah that great i mean let's let's be honest i mean it i think <laughs> you know the whole and i think wasn't that scene um i know for sure like the you know like the, on the poster and stuff like Catherine zeta jones and everything mm-hmm. in that like brown cat suit or whatever it was it was yeah like, well, that, that's a strong selling point. And if I remember it correctly, like she didn't even wear it in the movie, you know, <laughs> like yeah. It, <laughs> but there and... was like the scene where she's like, you know, practicing like going under the lasers and all that. I mean, no, that's a good point. It was definitely at that time where kind of the it's still kind of in sixties seventies mode where the actors are carrying the movie versus the premise standing out and. That's kind of where I took it as is like, yeah, it's just a fun, not deep movie, not 
Not a top Not ten movie. Demanding. No, I mean it was it was an okay <laughs> movie. Yeah, totally. I it seems like we're we were at that point where we had to remind people, you know, we can you can have your mediocre, you know, one or two star movies, and then you can have your great four or five star movies, but you can still have your in betweeners, the three out of fives, the ones that you're like, you Yeah, go. that was fun. Yeah. Then, then knock it didn't blow the roof off the house, but it it did what it did its job. <laughs> kind of like like street night with uh there you know, go wind you know, yeah <laughs> perfect weapon was up there you know i mean the b c luster you know but i mean the, yeah. but street night was kind of like all right you know <laughs> it was a cool premise totally uh you know it's worth watching every once in a while but it's not like i mean i used to watch the perfect weapon all the time so it's not oh. one of those movies where you just like <laughs> watch it right it it was all it was innumerable the, amount of times but <laughs> the 90s were complex dude like this was kind of when people would do the whole hbo world premiere or oh yeah i saw that it was on showtime all the time or usa network you know <laughs> it and we were kind of this is before tubi and pluto took over where we reminded everyone hey you know there's all kinds of just bizarre but fun cult movies you can watch <laughs> that, yeah i remember I remember buying the perfect weapon. I think it was when Hollywood video back in, you know, 20 years ago, they were about, well, they were, I don't think they were going out of business yet, but they were like selling off all their VHS tapes because, oh, man. They, you know, this is an old format. We need to make way for more DVDs, whatever they were doing. And that's before Blockbuster was going out of town. And I guarantee yeah. you, there was probably and, a bunch of direct to video Sony movies with Van Damme and Snipes on there where you're like, I guess I'll buy that now. Well, <laughs> I on. think I bought the perfect weapon VHS <laughs> from them, you know, for a couple bucks. And I thought, like, <laughs> for years, I thought, like, hey, I've got this this great item here. Because mm -hmm. I, I used to think, like, oh, it'll probably never come out on dvd or let alone i think blu-ray wasn't even a thing yet at the time. we didn't know but, what they would do down the road <laughs> <laughs> but now i got it on blu-ray and that that tape is long gone <laughs> yeah <laughs> we were all kind of in denial of ourselves i mean we did it with betamax we did it with even dvd we're, you know i still don't see anything wrong with today's dvd but at the same time i mean right. you do it even now where you're like do i want the blu-ray or do i want to just buy the movie or tv show digitally but what do I want to do today? Or do I want to just whatever streaming service has it or cable TV, if I haven't cut the cord, plays it on the regular basis. It, it's however yeah. you want to save money. And to me, it's, it's like, it really depends. You know, if, if it's a, if it's a film, I'm really want to see, or if I'm, if it's like my kind of film that I want to watch, usually I'm going to be buying it on Blu-ray, but the best uh, resolution, <laughs> but you know, if it's just something like, Hey, I would rent this. Okay, well let's let's check it out. There's mixed uh, reviews. Not sure if I want to waste time on it. Okay, then no. <laughs> but the whole 4K thing, I mean, I've just been very hesitant to to get to dip into that because I have been too. Because sometimes the quality is questionable. Like you're seeing details you shouldn't even be seeing, like someone's nose hair or underwear. <laughs> like yeah, uh... some of the colors, <laughs> like the way they're. <laughs> I guess the colors are like more saturated on Blu-ray sometimes. I don't understand I, that either. Yeah, I don't understand that. Some of the colors just look a little bit odd, even though it's yeah. supposed to be more realistic or natural. And it's, it's just like, like they did too good a job. <laughs> enough's enough, personally, because you know I I can't rebuild my entire collection now on, on 4K. Like, <laughs> yeah, I gotta kind of just limit myself to like, all right, Blu-ray is good enough. You know, like <laughs> yeah. Uh, I can still watch way. movies on VHS or VCD. I think Blu-ray is where I got to <laughs> finally just kind of say, all right, this is kind of... Yeah, just the first run, I'll go with it. Uh, I don't need the 4K, and pretty soon there might be an 8K, and it's like, oh, Lord, yeah, I don't need I that. Mean, don't get me wrong. If there's a film that I want to see, and we reach a day where they do away with <laughs> Blu-ray, and it's only on 4K, then I'm going to have to do it. But... um. You know, otherwise, I, I feel like uh, I think I'm just going to, you know, save a little money and not open up the can of worms. Of right. Like getting into it and then being and then feeling like now I got to replace every last movie or something. So, 
yeah it's it, it's like everyone wants to replace stuff and it's like well you know it you don't have to treat it like your car like i'm just not filling it anymore it doesn't have to be <laughs> a divorce <laughs> right right <laughs> no but i mean to everybody i mean i know people were psyched i thought about buying it but i just finally decided you know what i mean i gotta just i i, I was happy with the last uh blu-rays uh, that came out of, of bruce lee's films but i was still oh. pretty pretty intrigued to find out that they found this missing big boss footage after all these years yeah I, Years but decades, right? Who misplaced the the tape? <laughs> well, uh, supposedly, uh, supposedly this stuff was just sitting around. That um, man, I guess it was a fortune star, not Golden Harvest, but ah. uh, supposedly nobody had ever asked for it, and they and this Arrow company asked for it. And so yeah, we've got it. <laughs> you know, man, so, and so, so they did know. that whole 4K <laughs> Bruce Lee set, but. You know, I was thinking, I thought about jumping the gun, you know, getting it, but then I was just like, you know, you know, I, I'm real happy for everybody out there. I know a lot of people couldn't wait to get that, but I said to myself, you know what, I'm just gonna stick with the, with the Blu-rays. Yeah, I, right. I did buy the shout, the shout uh, select ones that were like mm -hmm. at least taken from a 4K print, color corrected. They look way better than the. Uh, yeah, I, I have that. Shout Blu-rays. So I, I, I said, you know what? This is good enough. Uh, that's the his greatest hits, pun intended one, I think. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there have been so many releases. And, I, and I've bought his movies more than any, any movie. Replaced them, you know, this VHS copy, this DVD copy, another DVD copy, a third DVD copy, Blu-ray copy, number one, <laughs> two, three. Okay, it's like, finally, it's like, geez, you know. <laughs> right. I, I love the movie, but I don't love it that much. I, I just recently I started just kind of like because I got so many movies, it's like I was like running out of space, basically. Especially once we had a baby. And yeah. <laughs> you know, like I used to have a movie room up there. Now now I have to condense everything in the basement. <laughs> and so much of my shelf space was taken up with like multiple copies of the same movie that I don't even you know, like I upgraded it, so I'm not even going to watch that copy anymore. So instead of right. hanging on to it, I finally decided to just, you know, either give them away or sell them for a few bucks or mm -hmm. whatever. eBay has been a real help at finding discounts, but there are times where sellers will make a deal with me. I'm like, uh-uh, that's, that's not a $40 item. <laughs> yeah. And then there's other times where they're offering even more. I'm like, okay, well, I will do 40 for this one. It's a big, giant exclusive set with a poster but uh any higher and i don't want to break my account <laughs> uh, speaking of bruce lee and wesley snipes there was some show uh, which i think we probably brought this one up before but he he yeah. like hosted some show back in masters the, of the martial arts yeah yeah the, yeah yeah 98 special it's, it's so much fun there's so a mixture of stand-up there it's kind of like the tourist world stunt awards in a way where they're honoring all these different acrobats yeah, and ultimate which is, fighters which is a great thing to do i mean totally and there one was, of these days the the academy awards needs to get on get and get with the program you know <laughs> mm -hmm. i i hope so man i i think everyone's getting sick right now so they're really hoping for some kind of extra inclusion you know because it's so wild how like the last stunt awards they gave out were like for I think Ben Hur. So it's like, oh, I don't Golden know. Globes man. and Emmys will do it, but that's for TV, you know. So it's like, what do we do for you know, movies? I, I follow, you know, obviously Hong Kong Film Awards giving out their best action choreography every year, and oh, that's also, good. like you said, the Taurus World Stunt Award. Yeah, <clears throat> it's fun reading their website and really like reading like the breakdowns of of the scenes and the stunts and everything. Yeah. They, they think very carefully how people are pitching it to them is like, what are we going to honor? <laughs> what are we going to give a tribute to? <laughs> Mission impossible two was yeah. the first winner of like the overall best stunt coordination on a feature film. That's good. I so, I mean, didn't know that, but that's good. You know, for anybody out there who's, who just hears the bad things about mission impossible two, 
hey, I mean, and I get it. Everybody's got different tastes. Some people might not like John Woo's style, but <laughs> yeah. I Every mean, action movie should be seen at least once, even if enough it's got... people love his style. Where you know, I, I definitely stand by that. The part two had the best action scenes. So, mm-hmm. well, and like you say, I mean, it doesn't. You're not going to get a plus, you know, acting and story and all these movies, but you should see them at least once for the experience and pyrotechnics. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, as a kid, like as an adult, I can go back and appreciate the first film a lot more as a yeah. kid, to be honest, even though I was excited for it, I wanted to see it. I was like into like golden eye, the game and it seemed the there movie you go. And stuff, and oh man. Good stuff. And uh, so I, I thought like Mission Impossible would be a lot like that, mm-hmm. but it was like a lot different. And <laughs> you know, the first time Very I watched different. it as a kid, I was kind of disappointed. I thought, well, you know, this isn't really an, like a spy action. <laughs> yeah. There's the some action in it, but it's, <laughs> you know, it's a little bit different. But then, um, you know, the video, <laughs> the Mission Impossible video game came out too, and, and that one was like really good. I think yeah. that one's highly underrated. Oh, uh, uh, which one the for the first movie or for the? It was uh, on Nintendo sixty four. Yeah, yeah it that, was based on the one. first movie. Yeah, <clears throat> and then they which says a lot. My like, two came out, and it was just like once you got hit with those John Woo action scenes, it was like all of a sudden now it's like boom, like now it's his action franchise. Oh, totally. But then when I go back and watch part one as an adult. It's like, all right, hold on a minute. Like, that's a cool film. <laughs> yeah, it, it was another one. Like, there wasn't action in every segment. It was also a mystery movie. But yeah. I, I, that, that's a good point on the video game with both that and GoldenEye. People would realize, hey, the video game can be just as cool as the movie. And instead of just we're recreating a few missions and uh, nothing really to it. And in a way, it was just like a... It was pretty much the same the 90s they somehow got it it had to be kind of like an 80s tv show where the uh the cartoon is you know of he-man or transformers is there to sell the toy and still be entertaining but yeah it uh, kudos to the ones who worked on the mission impossible games considering that the movie itself wasn't even made yet and was going for like multiple rewrites you know (laughs) oh yeah yeah and the the game too i mean i was like reading up on it recently i would have been like how do you make a coherent plot for a script that's not done yet? <laughs> Both GoldenEye and, and Mission Impossible had, you know, they had lots of missions based on the films, but, but they also had some some levels of missions that were, like, exclusive to the game. So, so exclusive. And, yeah. and uh, for bringing this back here, I do feel like Art of War is pretty well liked by half the Wesley Snipes fan base, but uh, Wesley Snipes, believe it or not, did a video game. Uh, really? Yeah. Uh, I mean, don't get me wrong. There were video games that were made of uh, a blade and everything, but he didn't have anything to do with that. But like in 2011, there was this thing called Julius Styles, the International, and just looking at it, it totally looked like uh, that in the cover for Game of Death looked like they were kind of a tribute to uh, the Art of War. But I mean when he started doing those movies that were cheaply made in Romania that he had no idea were going direct to video, but are kind of oh, liked yeah. by his fans. Uh, detonator. The, yeah. Yeah. The, exactly. The detonator, the, right? <laughs> the detonator totally looks like art of war two or three. Like, and he, he did a few other ones that were spy movies too. And he's like, yeah, he's kind of unofficially in that mode when he's not doing a gangster movie or slaying vampires. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I mean, do you have like a favorite of 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 all of his act, like action films? Like, is it Fast and uh, Fifty Seven, Blade? I, I'm definitely going to put. Uh, you know, I I kind of really love uh, Drop Zone a lot. Oh even yeah, yeah. A Drop lot of people Zone don't seem actually, to like it, but I I love it. <laughs> that's kind of a fun movie. I did too. I it, it's his Point Break. <laughs> it didn't really it didn't really wow me the first time I watched it, but yeah. You know, I bought it on Blu-ray you know, five, six years ago, and and I enjoyed it. I think Hans Zimmer did the music, I think. 
I believe so. Yeah. And it was just one of those, it took a while for everyone to kind of have fun with it, but it, it, it was kind of, I guess you could say the market that and money train kind of felt along with art of war kind of, were kind of on the wayside. Cause like he was doing so many movies and so many cameos and ensemble stuff and comedies that I don't know. It was just kind of hard to keep up. <laughs> I think he, I, he was either a producer or an executive producer on the big hit. You remember yes. that film? Yes. Yes. The Tarantino like assassin movie with Marky Mark and Lou Diamond yeah. Phillips. Yeah. Yeah. John Woo was another producer on it. Mm -hmm. um, and that's actually an odd film not to get off topic, but <laughs> you know, that was like during the slew of, uh, you know, Hong Kong directors coming and doing, coming to American films and, Right. Kurt Wong was the director, which Kurt Wong and Cy Hart his, did that with Van Damme. His recently. style was so different from from that movie. You know, he he had been doing like these gritty urban crime movies, like like uh, Crime Story with Jackie Chan, mm -hmm. and you know, a lot of like real like street level stuff crime that's stuff. more like early John Woo and even kind of like. Uh, kind of like Ringo Lum, or I was just know, about like to a, say Ringo, yeah, and like uh, you know, like just kind of like gritty and like uh, I don't know, he just had a cool style to his work. Yeah, no, Johnny Toe, yeah, uh, Andrew Lau and Cy Hart, that just all those other guys who weren't Woo, but were kind of like early John Woo and City on Fire type stuff, where it's like we're going to show you a hard boiled just mixture of action, mystery, and noir, and. Yeah, you know, looking back, I, I think I think Wesley Snipes should have done a movie, like a big big budget mainstream uh, theatrical release with one of those Hong Kong directors. You know, I, I would have loved to have seen that. Uh, something kind of like Maximum Risk with Van Damme would have been fun. Just yeah, <laughs> double team. You know, I mean, <laughs> well, less like double team, but yeah, I, I, just... <laughs> I love that movie. It's it's cheesy, no <laughs> doubt about it. But, you know, I, like, I get it. I get it. <laughs> like, if you know, like Troy Hawk's style, like his, like, oh, I love like, uh, inventive, I, like camera work and everything. Like, oh, even I love knockoff. Art. Yeah, no. When I, I saw knockoff in the theater, I thought it was a piece of crap. Oh, but, yeah. but I didn't know his style. I didn't know who Troy Hawk was at the time. I, 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 but I, then I going back, it's like, man, there's so much cool shit in just I, in the in his camera work and everything. Yeah, I, I, I. I I don't care for the movie, but I, I do like all his other crime movies like Time and Tide. and Yeah, even... Time and Tide was like, I think um, that's like his best modern day action work. I mean, that movie was really good. Even A Better Tomorrow Free, I think, has, it's often lampooned, but he he loves doing kind of just subtle revenge movies instead of in your face kind of. He, Ringo, and Johnny Toe all kind of do the whole just pot boiler, pot boiler. You know, disgruntled cop, bank robber with an unusual agenda, and then wham, 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 five different plot twists. <laughs> like you know, all three of back. them, all three of them collaborated on a film. You might, you probably saw it, maybe Triangle with. Uh, yes, I think so. Simon Yum and and Louis Koo and a lot of people are in it, but it was like you know, the film itself. If you didn't know their styles, it's not like it was broken up into like three stories or three segments. It was just mm -hmm. like okay. You know, Troy Hawk's going to direct the first third. Ringo is going right. to take over. Johnny Toe's going to finish it. <laughs> yes. But if you know their styles, you can kind of see it, especially totally Johnny can. Toe. Like, like there was no mistaking. Like, okay, he did the end. You know. <laughs> right. Who are you kidding? He totally. Yeah. With the iris <laughs> fade out. Yeah. It's it's got to be him. <laughs> the, the, the the certain stylistic shootout and everything, and just like the the dark humor and. You know, like all kinds of stuff. Just the camera work too, you know, but Oh totally. And I look at it even with uh Vengeance two thousand nine, like they, they love showing just unusual characters who we shouldn't have any connection to and somehow humanizing them in some capacity, whether it's a you know, retired hitman or a cop who's on his last day of retirement and then some they they even just the peaceful warrior who like owns a dojo, you know, it's just and you no, know, like because I was gonna say, um, you know, pretty much a, a lesser known director out of Hong Kong. His name is um, Leung Po Chi. 
I love him too. Oh my god! Well, but and he didn't really do that much stuff, but he he actually yeah. directed the Detonator with with Snipes. Mm-hmm. Yep, and he directed a Steven Seagal, uh, you know, direct a video movie called I think it was called Out of Reach. Yeah, yeah, he's done, he's done so many unusual like adventure, mystery, even horror movies, even some TV movies and. Uh, but yeah, just seeing him work all throughout like the Philippines and Britain, and then, like you say, doing these more all the every other Sony action movie, you know, it's just like with these has beens was just it was just kind of fun because because you just got to he does have a very vibrant uh, visual style. <laughs> uh, yeah, but... I, mean, I never saw too many of his films. I mean the the. The old one he did with Chow Yun Fat is called Hong Kong 1941, and it was kind of like it came out like before Better Tomorrow and everything. Chow Yun Fat wasn't even like an action star yet, so it was more of like like a drama and stuff. I always meant to see it. Uh, I, I've seen 1911 with Jackie Chan, but that that's a different story. But yeah, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, that one didn't didn't turn out very well. <laughs> no. <laughs> Uh, uh, it would have no, been good to see Jackie and, and Wesley Snipes together. Oh yeah, in a film, it, it came pretty close. Uh, I think on, I think they both auditioned for like, or no, it was Jet Li and him who auditioned for Ballistic X vs Sever, and that didn't take off. But oh really? Okay. <laughs> I had the opportunity to talk to the director who explained, you know, oh sweet, how he got fired from the movie by Andrew Stevens and. He had to live with the fact that, hey, I'm arrogant, but I still have much to learn. And, you know, the studios, you pretty much, they're always going to mess with your various projects. So you got to pretty much find a way to just kind of like how Conan O'Brien uh, would get away with doing some edgy comedy sketches. Is like you got to fool the producers into making them think that your idea is their idea. So they'll leave you alone. <laughs> and I just didn't work <laughs> out, but it, yeah, no, that that's a good point. Uh, uh, and how would you say Christian Duguay handles action here? I mean, he's no he's had his no shortage of a lot of mystery and action movies made for TV or in theaters. He did Live Wire with Pierce Brosnan. Okay, I've, another obscure movie. <laughs> I don't, I don't think I saw that one. I it was more of a just mad bomber kind of movie, and it got more popular like on cable tv like after the fact when his he became bomb yeah. i remember seeing like the preview some years back just, like, <laughs> yeah. watching it on youtube and stuff and I, I like thought about picking it up maybe i'll have to do that because i don't know if i've seen any of his other movies but <laughs> i i do remember like the there was like the detonator movies with pierce brosnan from the 90s that were oh um, yeah usa network like, tv movies direct to video type things but oh, no yeah. i i think you know I thought he handled the action pretty well. Um, I think it helps that he ha- he was basically mentored by, uh, uh, long story short, uh, David Cronenberg, and he took over the Scanners franchise. Then he did Screamers with Peter Weller. And then hmm. from that point on, he just decided, uh, you know, he was kind of, he, he worked with Donald Sutherland on a TV miniseries that was really good called Human Trafficking where he played a federal agent kind of taking down some, you know, black market guys, you know, stopping them from doing all those illegal exploitation activities. Uh, but yeah, uh, it, it seems like he's kind of still in this mode. He just knows how to create tension and just leave it to the stunt coordinators to, and demolition guys to come up with the explosions he can frame. <laughs> yeah. I mean, no, there, there wasn't anything that was like, just amazing or outstanding in the movie but it, everything was done in a, I think uh, above average very solid mm-hmm. you know kind of fashion it had a sleek look to it totally um, and I guess with the sequels part two had like maybe two decent fights I it kind of suffered from like too much editing and just very obnoxious dialogue that like just as they're about to fight some villain has to get in like a generic i thought i killed you line and you're like oh, oh 
lord is this a 70s cartoon show you know jinkies um and part three it's so weird it kind of is back to the same deal where it's like there's some chinese agents and south korean agents trying to start world war three but it's kind of it feels like one of those fred olin ray jim winorski type of schlock fest you know what i mean where there's stock footage he actually played neil shaw the character right right Yep, yep, and yeah, because I still never, I never got around to, to watching either either sequel, but yeah, I don't think anyone needs to see either. I, Art of War two often came packaged with part one in certain DVD Blu-ray packs. Part three came on Bounce cable TV channel quite a lot, and so that's usually where I, saw I get a little bit weary of a direct-to-video sequel to a theatrical release i mean <laughs> no i can't blame you <laughs> not to say that they can't be good but right no i mean something i rush out to see all the time we'll return after these messages the jacked up review show podcast is honored to be part of the blind knowledge podcast network join anytime talk the talk and enjoy yourselves there's something enlightening for everyone with this crowd of cool cats. Check them out. Hey, it's Brent Pope, the host of Breakfast with Brent Pope. You've seen me on some of your favorite TV shows saying things like, give it up, Jimmy. You got to sink this putt to win. On Breakfast with Brent Pope, I sit down with guests from the entertainment world and we do it all over breakfast. Or should I say breakfast? Every week on Breakfast, you get inside Hollywood info and tips, great breakfast wrecks and foodie debates, most of all, you get the most delightful 30 minutes of your week. So dig in. It's breakfast time. Listen at breakfast.com, Apple Podcasts, or wherever fine podcasts are found. Do you ever find yourself thinking about who would win in a fight between Goku and Superman? Hi, I'm James Gavsey, and on the Who Would Win show, me and my co-host Ray ignore anything important happening in the outside world and debate fictional battles between characters from comics, movies, and video games. We got a new show every week, and almost always am I the winner. Yeah, <laughs> not true, Ray. In the past, we've discussed such matches as Captain America versus Darth Vader, Solid Snake versus the Iron Giant, classic matchups like RoboCop versus Terminator, and even the Muppets versus Sesame Street. That one was crazy. So if you're a fan of geek culture and love a spirited debate, check out the Who Would Win Show wherever you get your podcasts or check us out at whowouldwinshow.com. Oh, totally. Uh, with, with part two, I mean, at least Snipes came back, you know, and it had a decent, almost Tony Scott kind of visual look. But then, yeah, part three, I was just kind of like, uh, yeah, this is kind of more of a, you know, 2 a.m. It looks like a cheesy sci-fi channel skinamax kind of movie it's not really what did what? you think of um boiling point did you see that one? Oh, i love that one uh really uh it's not really it's... liked a lot but it's kind of fun <laughs> yeah i mean i couldn't i i'd seen it a long time ago you know back in the day when i would rent uh, you know as many of those kinds of movies as i could you know have time for but very young Vigo Mortensen yeah <laughs> I, I watched it again you know within the last few years and I was just kind of like bored with it I was like nah this movie wasn't I mean, it, it is a very slow 90s movie and it I'm sure yeah. it's it, it pretty much if you take away the big giant cast it's kind of more of a Miami Vice episode so I mean... yeah Dennis Hopper right and then yeah uh, <laughs> you know one of these days I'll probably throw it on again, give it another go, but but no, I I can't blame you. I mean, some of these are going to be kind of goofy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to think. I mean, obviously, um, New Jack City is is fantastic. Mm -hmm. um, even well, he had a small smaller role in King of New York. That's right. Yeah. Very true. Very I still true. I feel like we're 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 forgetting something like. Uh, uh, Obviously, late movies, but um, geez, what else? <laughs> I, I well, you mentioned Rising Sun. I got Rising Sun. Got to watch that one again. That's it's more of a. Years. That's also kind of a noir movie mixed in with kind of buddy cop. But oh, you can Sugar make... Hill. Oh yeah, so underrated. Another that one was okay. I didn't love it, but <laughs> it was it was 
okay. It was definitely, you know, it was I mean, it's not than... a must see, but it's, I, I recall seeing that one on BET quite a lot it, and just liking how it wasn't glamorizing that, you know, lifestyle. <laughs> right. I mean, it, it, it's worthy, it, it's worthy to pick up or at least watch. I mean, it's not, it's not a classic or anything, in it, but mm-hmm. the New Jack City is a classic. It's not, it's not New Jack City, but it, it is, it's definitely worth watching. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, d- definitely around there, yeah. And, and without feeling like, hey, you know, they're they're talking about this and that, but you know, it. It seems like every other movie or show will often just want to ape the other. And I think that was kind of, it's interesting with New Jack City, how Mario Van Peebles wasn't going for a Scarface look, but yet that's often uh, what he got from people is, oh, it's a flashy Scarface type movie. So, I mean, yeah. uh, and that one was kind of more, that was almost like The Wire or an episode of Homicide, just showing you know, just a lesser lifestyle and how people get corrupted <laughs> but uh i like how i like i like movies where the criminal is very self-aware of their profession like it was almost kind of like never die alone with dmx where you're just seeing hey this guy knows what happened and is pretty much like are you sure you want me to tell the story because you're going to hate me by the end of this <laughs> Uh, but yeah, with these Neil Shaw movies, you can watch part one and uh, you can watch part two if it's a lazy Sunday and part three is more of a bad movie night, <laughs> despite being fans of Treach's music. <laughs> yeah, I mean, um, you mentioned Kerry Tagawa, Kerry Hiroyuki Tagawa. I mean, he's been, mm-hmm. he, I think he's been, uh, I know he's been doing quite well, it seems in, in recent years, like. He had that I didn't watch it, but he had like that that show what was it called I think it was called like Oh Man in the High Castle. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. Man in the High Castle. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Obviously he returned to uh Mortal Hawaii Kombat. Oh yeah. He oh he yeah playing soon again in the in the game um web series as well. So he's he's gotten to play the character three times now, which I think I think overall, I think that's probably his most famous role from the original Mortal Kombat film. Absolutely, yeah. It was it was cool seeing kind of that tribute while seeing the other actors. You know, like I thought Casper Van Dien did a cool take, his own cool take on Johnny Cage as opposed to trying to ape Lyndon Ashby. You know? Yeah, yeah. No, Casper was was good. Um, I wish they had released the third season of that web series. And yes. Oh, Garrett Warren. They did Warren. like that interview with Garrett Warren. <laughs> yeah, on Romecast. It was so good. And uh, you know what? Michael J. White got to be part of that. But I would have loved to have seen Wesley Snipes part of the Mortal Kombat franchise, too, I think. Yeah, uh, you know, I never even really. I don't know who he'd play, much. but it'd be cool if he played just someone who, even if they just created him for the movie, just like as. He could be kind of a just someone who just threatens Raiden or Sub Zero, maybe. <laughs> oh, another one of his movies. Well, I mean, he's only in it, not a whole lot, but it's a more recent film, um, Cutthroat City. I don't know if you saw that one. Yeah, it's still on the watch list. Uh, what, what do you think of it? Was it like Brooklyn's Finest? You know, or... I was hoping it was going to be an epic kind of like yeah. I mean, Brooklyn's Finest was was great. I mean. Mm-hmm. Antoine Fuqua, I mean, that's his specialty. Doing yeah, this. he's the Walter Hill of our generation. <laughs> you know, he he's great at doing those films. Training Hard, Day, I mean, hard boiled like movies. Yeah, Replacement Killers was. Oh was yeah, freaking a, a very fun movie. Uh, you know, totally. even though you know people, I think a lot of people. I I, I gather a lot of people who are already fans of Chow Yun Fat probably were disappointed with it because. He didn't really get a whole lot of, you know, acting mm-hmm. to, to work with in that film, but um, I think he made up for it with like the corruptor. I, I'd say so. Yeah, I'm, it it but was with, very eye opening. 
yeah for me it was like because i i had never heard of chow yun fat when when that movie came out i mean i was only like 12 right so, <laughs> um but i i i learned right away like okay he was he was another big star in hong kong you know and i had only recently in in the last few years been getting into you know bruce lee jackie chan mm -hmm. their movies so then all of a sudden okay hey now here's this other guy all right, let's let's see what else he's done. And I had heard of John Woo. Oh, sweet! They did this movie Hard Boiled together. You know, let's rent that. And then you know, it's like mind blowing the first time you watch it. So, <laughs> uh, I I definitely thought so too. Yeah, it was a fun mixture of all kinds of movies. <laughs> but I mean, back to Cutthroat City. I think RZA the RZA has a, a lot of potential as a filmmaker. But yeah, I, I'd say I don't so. know. I felt that film, it had a great cast. Mm -hmm. Demetrius Ship Jr., who played Tupac in the All Eyes oh, on Oh, that's Wesley. right. Um, Imagine if Tupac and Wesley had done a movie together. Oh, that would have been really cool. That's I a mean, dream that cast would... right there. <laughs> um, who else? Ethan Hawke was in it, right. I believe. And that's then, why uh, I thought it was going to be like Brooklyn's Finest, because they're doing movies together. Lisa Gonzalez, I mean, she... She really played the kind of a different type of a, uh, you know, they made her more like frumpy and stuff in, in that movie mm -hmm. than she normally. She's, you know, not looking like that, but <laughs> right. Um, I don't know. I just the the ending was like really weird too. It was like it was kind of over advertised, but you didn't really know what to fill in a way. Well, versus... the ending is it was kind of hard to figure out exactly what what was going on from what i remember i only watched it once i just remember i, I don't want to spoil it in case I, I wanted to watch it, it but it, it, it just kept getting taken off every other streaming service i was on so i was like uh what's going on <laughs> yeah i mean i just i thought it was going to be like i thought it was going to be better than it was but it's still worth watching for sure uh you know Wesley Snipes' part in the movie was pretty small, but I think he was in at least. It's better than some of his latest movies, which have been kind of three scenes. Yeah, he did a few other one one where he was like trying to deactivate some robots, and it just kind of was too slow for my taste. <laughs> <laughs> did you see the Game of Death one that he did or not? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That was like how was that? Because I never saw that one. Uh, you know, despite people not caring for some of the other movies that. Uh, that filmmakers worked on with Dolph Lundgren. I feel like this one was at least it gave a fun role villain roles for Zoe Bell and uh, hmm. Gary Daniels, but altogether it was kind of a tribute to Snipes's earlier work. Like he does kind of play another just guy with a special set of skills, kind of like Art of War, but then he finds himself in similar kind of situations, kind of like you would see in Money Train or Passenger Fifty Seven. So it's kind of just a love letter to his earlier work while also a, being who yeah. directed it uh Giorgio Serafini he's the Sutter European filmmaker who's uh you know done some like it or hate it movies with Randy Couture and Dolph Lundgren and I'd say okay. this is probably a better one he did where everyone had pretty it pretty much just was another just get in get out just fun slugfest movie like it could have worked for even Stone Cold or uh, Michael J. White. Like, it's just, even Roddy Piper. It is a very straightforward action movie that knows what it is instead of, like you say, being over-edited or not making use of talent. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's like, it's, it's hard for me to get over the title. Like, because it yeah. goes right to Bruce Lee's movie. Game no Death, relation but... to Bruce. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. <laughs> nothing to do with that one obviously <laughs> but uh no one of these days i may have to check it out yeah uh, I, it should be on just about every other streaming platform <laughs> let's, let's see uh what else um you mentioned brooklyn's finest uh but that, that was a good role for him i oh, i like his role in that film such a tragic movie even kind of once again, yeah. kind of the, it's not the same kind of role that you already saw him in in New right. York City or Sugar Hill. It's kind of just and just good 
rapport with Don Cheadle and uh, who's in a similar role, much like in, you know, that that's the kind of role I like seeing Don Cheadle in, and just like in, you know, out of sight or colors, where he's like, see, he can really have oh, so yeah, many yeah. different shades to. Yeah, one out of sight was great. I mean, that, that that's what made me a fan, Don Cheadle back in the day. Totally. Uh, there's all these actors who have been chameleons for years and you kind of just wish someone could still throw him a bone. It was like, oh, but remember when they did this and that? <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. Uh, is there any just like premise that you're surprised Snipes hasn't done yet? Like he, he's still got maybe a few extra kicks in him. I mean, I saw the player TV show, which and True Story, which was a Netflix miniseries he did. And same kind of deal where I was like, see, he can still kick a guy and uh, have an over-the-top persona and play around with some psychological mind games with his characters. I'd love to see him at least do just one more cool slugfest before he hangs it up. Because he's yeah, done be stuff nice. with I Eddie mean, Murphy, but that's about it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's no reason why he can't can't continue to make films for a little while. I mean, um, Arnold, Stallone, they're still doing it. I mean, yeah. they're older than him. And, <laughs> I mean, he did his diehard, you know, his diehard um, clone or whatever you want to call him, like ripoff. Yeah. Diehard scenario, I guess is the best term. Right. He's done every other Dog Day Afternoon type movie. <laughs> He's still got something left. <laughs> Uh, let's see. I mean, I one thing I'm wondering is, you know, why isn't he in Expendables 4, apparently? I think everyone got so fed up, like, waiting on that to come around. I know Terry Crews had a falling out because the agent who, uh, the talent agent who grabbed him at the award show happened to be the same guy who reps Adam Sandler and Stallone. So that got really ugly real fast. And then uh i i know stallone was just getting sick of it because dealing with producer avi Lerner, and that's when he decided okay you know uh i'm gonna do what i should have done where this is now just an excuse for me to leave the franchise and jason statham is spearheaded now uh but it i know the poster was announced at cons before it was even ready to be greenlit and they put yeah statham and banderas's name on it even though banderas wasn't confirmed so yeah Apparently, Schwarzenegger is in it, though. I mean, from what I, I understand, he's in it. Cause really? I, I heard that he filmed scenes for it. Interesting. And is it just, I guess they're just trying to keep it a secret or something, like a, like a I, surprise cameo or something. I, I, obviously, I can't swear to that, but I, that's I saw what I'm movie ex- web that he wasn't returning, but who knows? They might have filmed something. I, I think he did a good job on FUBAR recently where he's parodying his spy movie persona but yeah what, there's an uh what, arnold what did you think of the trailer anyway of uh, expendables 4 oh i, I mean I, I always go in cold i, I haven't seen the trailer <laughs> you didn't even oh, okay yeah you're a lot like my friend eugene yeah, i mean they, they always give it away cold. man they always give away but i i like scott wog and rick roman wog the, those two stuntmen turned brothers but i mean yeah, I want to check out the one with that he did with Jackie Chan and John Cena, the Hidden Strike. Oh, I haven't seen that. Hidden well, Strike. it was like a movie that was delayed for a long time. Oh, because of his project oh, extraction or something or other, and then oh wow, different titles. But uh, apparently, it's it may well be out on uh, Netflix. I see it now. Yeah, I might okay. be wrong about that, but no, no, I thought I heard you're right. It was on there. Yeah, I, I see it on there. I'm, I'll have to check that one out. That looks like a crazy bananas movie. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, yeah, I mean, I mean, I don't want to spoil anything. I mean, it's just a trailer, obviously. Um, oh, good. Uh, do you have I mean, don't get me wrong. I, I want to see it. I mean, what? And it's just a trailer, so you know, maybe the right. movie huh? better, but the the trailer was like a little bit underwhelming, I would say, but ah oh, bummer. <laughs> but that's, I mean, that's why I often don't watch them because like they'll 
half the time they'll be just like deleted scenes and so i'm like okay well <laughs> yeah that, that's a good point yeah you, you never want to get too hung up because sometimes you see things in the trailer and then you and then they're not in the film yeah <laughs> it's insane uh. but yeah no that's definitely one i mean i gotta go see that one in the theater i mean i've seen them all in the theater so uh, i only saw the third one in theaters but i'm definitely gonna see yeah that one in theaters uh, i'm gonna try and get as many of my friends there for it and i, I i'm with you i do wish snipes and banderas could come back but uh, yeah, even jet lee jet lee i mean i yeah. think jet lee was getting tired of it oh well he yeah. has like arthritis i think now and yeah thyroid issues thyroid, and yeah. everything so but at they, least you know tony jaws in it they could have gotten donnie Wipes. in but they yeah, wouldn't Yen would be great to see in, in one of those finally or jackie chan I he's think. another yeah. one who as long as you film in hong kong and not in hollywood he'll he'll be in your movie and it's just it seemed like each time they tried to get all the other guys they weren't either willing to pay their typical salary or they just couldn't agree on what their role even was so it's a shame because uh for a movie that's supposed to be a fun throwback to earlier action adventure cinema it would have been fun but we'll see and didn't steven seagal yeah. i think he was gonna be in it but he had had a disagreement with with learner right yeah he had pissed off learner so many times and stallone was like hey i've already seen him misbehave at one of my parties i just want to get this damn thing done on time <laughs> <laughs> well yeah you never know i mean maybe if i kind of expect this will be the last one but i guess you never know maybe he's like you said maybe maybe it goes off in the statham direction where he's kind of yeah leading. Christmas, an expendable story. Dun, 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 dun. Yeah, that was what they were going to call it, right? And then they, I oh, guess I they were know. going with Expendables just, 4. I had no idea. I was just making stuff. <laughs> oh, well, no, no, seriously. Like, I remember there, you know, when, back in, you know, a couple years ago or something, there was some articles that, that said, like, that was going to be the title of the film or something. So. Oh, jeez. <laughs> I guess you can name, start naming films. Huh? Either way, Stallone's killing it on Tulsa King, and I, I hope all these guys can stay busy because so many of our guys are either, you know, retired or don't want to do these kind of movies anymore. <laughs> no, I, I champion all of them. Keep going, you know, as, as long going. as they can. Make, I like I like the the tagline, even though it's cheesy. You know, they'll die when they're dead. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, something over the top. That's just <laughs> but that. you know, Snipes. I mean, come on. I mean. Um, he he can keep going. I think for a while he should. I mean, um, I think Samo Hung he's starting to show his age. Unfortunately, I he's mean, getting up there. Yeah, <laughs> he's in his seventies now. Which I mean, he's younger than Stallone and and Arnold and them. But I think he's had more like health issues and like I think so. I don't think he's to dementia level yet. Anyone can correct me if I'm wrong. But yeah, he's definitely seen better days i would like to see well, simon yam but other than tomb raider too he hasn't really done any hollywood appearances i think thamo he had had like a knee surgery something like that back around the time of um of Ip Man 2 he had had like a heart surgery even oh damn that's i mean that's a lot man that's i know they they just gave him like a some kind of recognition at the I believe it was the Asian Film Awards. And that's sweet. Uh, that's back really in nice. March. And he was like, I saw the video where he accepted the award. He he was grateful that people still, you know. Acknowledge uh, him. Acknowledge his his impact. Because him industry. and Vinny the Jet are kind of forgotten. And it's like, why? They're they're legends in the action industry. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, Even Chuck Jeffries, you know, he's done movies like for PM Entertainment and he's the chariot guy in Gladiator, but I'll always remember him as designing the fight scenes in both Wesley Snipes' 90s movies as well as the first Spider-Man, you know. <laughs> uh, but yeah, all these coordinators, they should not be forgotten. They shouldn't be known by even just the filmmakers. And uh, that that's cool, though, to see Samo still getting some love because... Yeah, uh, keep keep going as long as you can i mean you know they, they could probably get tony will. leong because he got a career boost from doing shang chi but 
And yeah, I, I, mean, I was getting so annoyed because family members were like, oh, I've never heard of him before. I'm like, ah, we have some homework to do. He's been for 20, 30 years. Right. Uh, he's only <laughs> been in every other movie with <laughs> Andy Lau and Maggie Q and, and Xiaoyan Fett. But yeah, I mean, it'd be so funny had he been in Departed and played his same character as Infernal Affairs. That would have been meta. <laughs> Yeah, no, I I, th- I think that was a good uh, Hollywood debut for him, finally. Finally. <laughs> more, more fanfare than, I guess you can count the Great Wall for Andy Lau as being kind of a... That's so true, and I, I kept guffawing because basically Matt Damon had played in The Departed Andy Lau's traitor character, you know, which is a remake of Infernal Affairs, and so I thought it was so funny. Oh, two traitors in one movie together. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the Great Wall. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, The Great Wall wasn't all that great, but... Yeah, it, it could have been better, but... Shang-Chi, I mean... was, Shang-Chi was a lot of fun, though. Oh, totally. That, take away the bad humor by Ben Kingsley. There, there's some fun, 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 fun mayhem in that movie. <laughs> I mean, the, the action, too. I mean, the, especially in the first... Like, the, the fight on the bus, and then the fight... Yeah. Scaffolding and stuff. That, that whole Doctor that Strange some... part of that whole cinematic universe is... I mean... Uh, this is why I w- am wishing that with this new Blade movie that's been delayed and e- each director has quit so far, I-, I was like, if anything, if they want to save this movie, make him be the son of Blade. Bring Wesley back into that cinematic universe. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you- you've heard of Brad Allen? Brad Allen. Brad he, had, Allen. he had been the fight stunt coordinator. Oh, the martial Sean artist. Ch- but he no. passed away, unfortunately. Um Oh wow! He was the wow. non-Chinese member of Jackie Chan's stunt. Yeah, movie. he worked on Hellboy Two and Riddick. Oh my god, damn! And he was in—I don't know if you saw the movie Gorgeous with Jackie Chan, but yeah, he's the boxer. Yeah, 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 yeah. He had like two great fights with Jackie in that film. A very—I yeah. mean, that guy was just phenomenal. I'm looking at it now, man. And Every other I mean, British or Canadian production, Ninja Assassin wolves edgar wright movies i believe he even did kingsman because i remember watching the yes. first kingsman in the theater and i and i felt i thought to myself some some of this action has like a hong kong flair to it and yeah, then i so, see brad allen's name in the credits i'm like oh well there you go man so he he got one world stunt award three sag sag guild awards now he passed away like right I think it was like a month before the Shang Chi movie came out, or something. Uh, they they like find, dedicated it to him. I can't find anything on what he died of. Did he? I'm not sure exactly what what happened. No, I don't know. That that is sad. Yeah, it's very sad. I mean, I I was shocked to hear. I mean, I didn't. Forty eight. Damn. I didn't know him obviously personally. I never met him, but. Um, and like you say, you feel like you know him when you recognize his signature action style, and you're like, yeah, that. I'm staying till the end of the credits to see who the second unit stunt coordinator is. <laughs> yeah, and there was a great interview up on YouTube with him from back in the day where he talked about like, you know, how he got started working with Jackie Chan and and got in. That's nice. Got ended up being on the stunt team and everything. Cool. Very nice. <laughs> well, uh, that's all, folks. I feel like we have. <laughs> We have uh, pretty much given Snipes a lot of love. We're still talking about all the 70s to current day iterations of the action genre. And we know what we want to see. We know what we love seeing. We talked about some other underrated sleepers. Uh, uh, fan mail is always appreciated. Uh, and well, we promise to give you some more fun interviews soon, too. Yeah, I, I'm glad that people are kind of starting to take it back to like the practical effects days a little bit more. You know, I mean, I, they're they're starting to realize like this this just generally looks better, right? Than uh, CGI. <laughs> uh, totally, and it, it's a shame too because I remember the days when CGI still looked legit good, like. When we're talking T two or the first Jurassic Park, and then oh yeah, 
uh, everyone who's been with it long enough has always said like every time like people would make suggestions they'd always like cut it out or just say oh we're not doing that or we'll worry about the script later it's like no <laughs> give no, these good exactly. effects a plot I mean, cgi on. has its place don't get me wrong i mean it, yeah you know but we're like a you know traditional action contemporary action film i mean i think it should be used sparingly these days and some <laughs> i think a lot of times it gets just overused which, that I, or granted, I, I get I get to like for safety measures, I you know, I don't blame anybody for wanting to use it for safety measures, but right. But it's just so sad when you see like some of these films and like the people storyboarding it didn't even know how they wanted to create it. Where it's like, well, you've had all you've had, you know, five months to figure out how you want to film this. <laughs> Could have asked. <laughs> Uh, uh, hopefully they hire people with more experience and less arrogance, you know, because you're just always yeah. so sad when you ask someone about one of their favorite, your favorite movies of theirs, and they're like, oh, well, nothing personal. I don't want to talk about it, or it was good, but I didn't agree with how it was distributed or made, or it was just hell. I hated making it. And it's like, ah, oh, damn, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, definitely, man. It was It was a good chat. Yeah, I mean, long overdue, man. Great catching up with you. <laughs> yeah, it's always fun. We should, yeah, we we got to start doing it again more. More. I regularly. promise. I, I mean, we mentioned so many good movies, and I, I do promise we're going to do more actor specials. Where it's like, here's five, you know, like crime movies with this actor. Here's two action thrillers, you know, with this guy. Here's five by this particular filmmaker. Here's four horror giallo movies by this, you know, cult filmmaker. You know, just always something to just kind of just show. We're like the Mill Creek Blu-ray pack of the <laughs> podcast. We <laughs> well, one of these days, we we if you want to do it, we we should just do a John Woo episode because I mean, to me, totally. like that's that's even that's like so much to go off on, you know, like, oh, um, like, like you could e you could easily fill you know two hours worth of that two hours, yeah, and not even and hardly scratch the surface. Whereas you know, um, yeah, I'm. Art of War. I mean, I've seen it many times, but like somehow I don't know the film <laughs> as as well as like you know, um, Hard Target or Hard Boiled or something. Like that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> a different kind of movie. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, take care, man. Anytime, great talking my with dude. you again. It will Always keep great in touch. having you on. We'll, Anytime. Uh, we'll you know, find it. more topics epicness we're gonna keep celebrating <laughs> absolutely man always follow us on the web on facebook twitter and instagram the podcast is available on podbean spotify iHeartRadio, anchor apple and anywhere else podcasts are available feel free to review our show and leave comments on any of those sites Thanks a million for listening. It's a jacked up.